happy ho ho holidays. This is our last episode of 2022, so let's make it a good one. Before we go see some fun holiday segments, let's start this episode off with ASB announcements. <laughs> Jude, I can't wait for break. Roman, you must really like the holidays. I really do, but I also love singing holiday songs. Well, Roman, I have the perfect segment for you. Let's roll it. Let's do it. Olaf, Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. 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 Let's go! Before I melt away, is it like Frosty the Snowman? Yeah. 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 Frosty um, the Snowman, right? Oh yeah, I think that's what? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Fast and Furious. <laughs> White Christmas? I don't know. I give up. It's Jingle Bells. <laughs> I've never heard of this song. Is it Snow White? <laughs> Snow no. White and the Nine Doors. This is it like some old song or? It's, yeah. It's a classic. Do you give up? Or this is playing it on the Christmas channels. Yes. You're just lying now. <laughs> yeah, I give up. I don't know about these guys. Okay. Okay. He's in the we have them. Yeah, we give up. Is Jingle Bells. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. It is Jingle no. Bells. You're yes. There's a birthday oh, party. Oh, oh, Farmer Refute. <laughs> From like Hamilton or whatever? Hamilton! It's a holiday song! It could have been Jingle made during the holidays. No. The farmer from Curious George. Technically. It's a farmer in Curious George? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of things. Yeah, sure. Sleigh ride. Get the hell out of here! No, it's not. Yes, it is. It is. Not sleigh ride. It is. What's sleigh ride? Next up, let's see some sports scores for this week. But being on the topic of sports, let's see some predictions for the Christmas football games followed after. Oh, we, hit like oh. we hit the field like oh. We hit the field like oh. We hit the field like oh. All day like oh. 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 like oh. 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 Roman, you grew a few inches. Yeah, I got a, another haircut too. This week, our eighth grade boys basketball team played their last game of the season against First Avenue, ending up with a 45 to 25 win. The eighth grade girls team had two games, one against First Avenue and the other against Clifton. They lost the first one 34 to 32, but won the second one 51 to 12. Our seventh grade boys basketball team had one game this week and they finished with a win. That's all for this week, Power Cubs. Happy holidays. Hey Tiger Cubs, I'm Lorenzo. I'm Sammy. And I'm Roman. This season, the NFL has three games on Christmas Day, and we're going to take a look at who's playing who. Starting off, the Green Bay Packers are playing the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins have an 8-5 record, while the Packers have a 5-8 record. If the Packers take a loss here, they might not make it to the playoffs. It definitely seems like the Dolphins are favored to win this game, but they are also coming off a two-loss streak, so anything could happen. Mm -hmm. Next, the Denver Broncos are playing the LA Rams. First off, the Broncos sit at a 3-10 uh, and 10 record and a five-game losing streak, their last in their division. The only bright spot on that team is that top 10 defense, which has just been playing really well and picked off a lot of really great quarterbacks. Well, to contradict that defense, they have a bottom three scoring offense, meaning they're one of the worst in the NFL at scoring. That's true, but so do the Rams, and most of that is because their there's starting quarterback, Matthew Stafford, has been out for a very long time, and they're one of the best receivers in the league. Cooper Cup is also out. The last game we're going to take a look at is Bucks versus Cardinals. The Bucks right now are six and seven, with Brady not doing very well in the season, and the Cardinals are four. However, Kyler Murray had an ACL tear uh, two weeks ago against the Patriots, and he's going to be out for this game. 
I think that this game is going to be an interesting one, and it's definitely going to come down to how the Bucks offense can do against the Cardinals defense. Mm -hmm. Finally, our game picks. Let's give it to Sammy. Um, I think Miami is going to take the win here against the Green Bay Packers. Miami has a solid offense and a solid defense. That's true. As for the Broncos-Rams game, I think the Rams are going to take the win. Uh, the addition of Baker Mayfield kind of just makes them slightly better, uh, but really could go either way. I absolutely agree. I think that especially for the Bucks cardinals game, it could also go either way, although I do think that the Bucks are going to be able to pull ahead with the win. That's all for this week, Tiger Gubs. See ya. Argentina would steamroll Croatia 3-0 with Messi scoring the most goals in Argentina men's history. This is a much-needed motivational boost going into the finals. The historic run with Morocco would come to a close after they lost 0-2 to France with the worst referee performance I have ever seen in the World Cup. The third-place game would take place on Saturday between Croatia and Morocco, with the game quickly being tied after two goals in 10 minutes, but Croatia would come away with a 2-1 victory after a floater over the goalie's head. Now for the final match, the final game for Messi to secure GOAT status. Argentina would go ahead early thanks to Messi and Angel Di Maria, but once the game seemed out of reach, Mbappe would come out of nowhere and score two goals in two minutes. Mbappe would then score again in, in the 118th minute, but Messi would also get one, sending the game to a shootout. The France goalie was terrible, letting up four straight goals, and Argentina would send Messi off with a perfect ending. Jude, what are your favorite holiday traditions? Um, hmm. Do you have any? I'm not sure, but me and Atticus should ask some people in the quad. Sounds good to me. All right, Tanner, what is your favorite holiday tradition? Pizza. All right, thank you. Opening gifts on Christmas. Yeah, the Christmas season. Okay. Fortnite night wrapping yeah. hot chocolate on Christmas. A good holiday. Christmas. Saving the tree. Probably going up to Big Bear. Eating. <laughs> Making gingerbread cookies for Santa Claus. I like giving them a Santa. BBQ. Eating steak and chicken. Dressing up for Halloween. The white elephant gift exchange with my family. Lighting up the Christmas tree with a bunch of ornaments and lights. Hanukkah. Christmas, because I get free presents. My favorite holiday tradition is going around seeing Christmas tree lights around there. Lighting the Hanukkah candles. Watching cheesy Christmas movies. Watching The Grinch every year. Um, dressing up for Halloween. <laughs> um, going to my family's house. Santi, what is your favorite holiday tradition? I love um, the Mexican, you know, Mexican gatherings, bro. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Decorating the Christmas tree. I just like getting gifts from everyone. Making cookies. Eating duck on the, in, during Christmas. Christmas trees. And finally, Danny, what is your favorite holiday tradition? Favorite holiday tradition is probably opening presents on New Year's Day. Yeah! Those were some great answers. Yep. Next up, you can never forget their segments. It's the decaying Lyco Persicans. Let's see what they have in store for the holiday episode. Hello, and welcome back to decaying Lyco Persican. This week, we will be reviewing Elf. As always, let's start with the plot. It is about a human baby named Buddy who accidentally crawls into Santa's bag and travels all the way to the North Pole where he is raised as an elf. He finds out he is a human, so he goes to New York to find his real dad. We give the plot a 7 out of 10. Now on to the characters. The main character is, of course, Buddy. Buddy is this 30-year-old man who thinks he's an elf. When he goes to New York searching for his dad, it is clear that he's not familiar with human customs. We give Buddy a 9 out of 10. Overall, we rate this movie an 8 out of 10. I disagree with everything that this review has said, because I think this movie was, an unfun was just plain unfunny and had bad humor. Screaming in front of the camera is not funny, which is why I rate this movie a 0 out of 10. No, 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 no. Up no, next, no. let's see some holiday editions of two great back to back segments. It's trivia followed by random ranks.
Christmas character, what do you like better, Santa Claus or Rudolph? Santa Claus, because he's more iconic. Santa Claus! Probably Santa Claus. Santa Claus, that's what we're doing on the door. Santa Claus. So overall, as a Christmas character, do you like the gingerbread man or elves better? I like gingerbread, the gingerbread man. Uh, I think the gingerbread man would be more delicious, so... As a Christmas character, what do you like better, Santa Claus or the gingerbread man? Honestly, I like Santa Claus better. Because well, Santa's better. Honestly. Um, the gingerbread man, because um, it reminds me of food. Yeah. Santa Claus. Now it's time for a not holiday themed segment, but still a great one. Roman, let's learn about some mythology. But after that, I have a fun character essay to share. Soon after Beowulf kills Grendel, the Nords fix up Herod and start partying again. This goes on for quite some time until Grendel's mother breaks down the door or kills Hrothgar's most trusted advisor, Ashir, and steals back Grendel's arm. So Hrothgar sent Beowulf to kill Grendel's mother and avenge Ashir. They track her through some evil locations and end up back at the Lake of Monsters. This where they find Ashir's head along with a lot of sea monsters. Beowulf puts on, on his heavy armor and jumps into the lake where Grendel's mother lives at the bottom. It takes a day for Beowulf to hit the bottom of the lake, and then as soon as he gets close, Grendel's mother ambushes him and drags him into her cave. So they fight, but the sword hunting really does nothing. And then Beowulf uses some wrestling moves, so Grendel's mother just starts stabbing him. And then Beowulf sees Grendel's mother has a bit of a hoarding problem and has a magical Damascus steel sword forged by giants. So Beowulf swings at her until closer, then he chops off Grendel's head to bring back to Hrothgar. And then the sword his blade disintegrates. He returns to Herod and gives Grendel all the head and the hilt of the sword to Hrothgar. Hrothgar gives Beowulf some treasure her, and then sails back to his homeland. So Beowulf returns and gives King Helak back the treasure and King Helak gives him a sword, a land, and a really nice house. Then King Helak and his kin die. I am Beowulf is crowned king. Beowulf rules for 50 years without incident. Then someone angers a dragon by stealing a cup from its board. Then the dragon and torches Beowulf's house, and Beowulf challenges the dragon to single combat. So Beowulf brings the sword Hela gave him, called Nagling. It's an heirloom, and it glows with magical power, and then it snaps in half during the fight. Then Weeglaf tries to help Beowulf, and witnesses him get hit through the neck. Then Beowulf tries to stab the dragon with a dagger, while Weeglaf finds a weak spot in the dragon's armor, then Beowulf finishes the job with his dagger. Now at this point, Beowulf should die due to the gaping hole in his neck, but no, it does nothing. But then the dragon poison definitely will. So Beowulf asks Wiglaf to pull some of the riches from the burrow and see what he's won. So Wiglaf runs through the burrow and grabs the best looking riches and shows them to Beowulf. Then Beowulf says that Wiglaf is the next king and dies. So King Wiglaf exiles the 11 Yates who ran away from the dragon. He has the other Yates retrieve the rest of the dragon's treasure and has Beowulf's funeral. And then they set up a barrel for Beowulf with all the treasure Beowulf has acquired. Hello there, my name is Roman Camarda, and in this series, I'm going to go in-depth on both the real and fantastical characters and people. Whether they be South Pass heroes or world heroes, real or fake, you'll find them here. Hello guys, it's me, Roman, and in this holiday episode, we're talking about Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. I know, I know, there's a huge debate between whether it's a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie. But here at TCN, we think that it's a Thanksgiving movie. No, just joking, it's a Christmas movie. Now, back to Jack Skellington. He's a highly respected skeleton who is the king of Halloween. One night after Halloween, Jack finds himself bored of the whole holiday and wants something new. He stumbles upon Christmas Town and hatches a plan to take over Christmas. He pitches the idea to all of Halloween Town and using his enthusiasm and charisma gets every member of Halloween Town in on it. Anyway, Jack's skeleton's selfishness throughout the movie almost leads to the demise of Christmas and himself. Because of this, Jack learns that it's okay to be happy with what you have, and instead of constantly looking to take from others, you should look to improve upon yourself. Overall, it's a great movie, and I strongly uh, advise I'm very watching. happy to announce that we have a new segment to show. Let's see Try Not To Laugh, made by Liam. Liam. 
I have the perfect segment for you. Let's finish off this episode by seeing what happened in This, this day, day in history. history. On this day, December 18th in history, there have been many significant events that have taken place. Let's just take a look at a few of them. On December 18th, 1787, the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments of the United States Constitution, was signed into law. These amendments, which protect individual rights and freedoms, have been a cornerstone of American democracy for over two centuries. On December 18th, 1903, the Wright brothers made history with their first successful powered flight. Orville and Wilbur Wright's achievement marked the beginning of an era of manned flight and revolutionized transport and communication. On December 18, 1945, the concentration camp at Auschwitz was liberated by Soviet troops. The camp, located in Nazi-occupied Poland, was one of the most large was one of the largest and deadliest during the Holocaust, with over 1.1 million people, mostly Jews, murdered there. The liberation marked the end of a horrific chapter in history and the beginning of the process of bringing the perpetrators to justice. In 1994, during World War II, the Battle of Bulgay began in Belgium. This was a major turning point in the war and marked the beginning of an end for the Axis powers. The battle was the largest and bloodiest in the European theater and it resulted in an Allied victory. In 1998, President Bill Clinton was impeached by the House of Representatives on charges of perjury and obstruction of justice. This was only the second time in history that a sitting president had been impeached, and it sparked a lengthy and highly publicized trial in the Senate. Finally, in 2010, the Arab Spring protests began in Tunisia, eventually spreading to other countries in the Middle East and North Africa. These protests, which were driven by a desire for political and economic reform, led to the toppling of several authoritarian governments and marked a major turning point in the region. Thank you, Tiger Cubs. Wait, shoot. Is that all the segments for this episode? Re really? This episode flew by. Well, as always, sayonara, Tiger Cubs. And see you next year.